Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I discuss the challenges that pastors face as they join fellowship groups, and we discuss this week's messages in our series entitled, Come Together. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody. Armchair preaching with Pastor John. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello, Pastor John. How you doing today? Good. All good. Good day today. It's Tuesday, uh, it's Tuesday. the last last January day thirty first day of January, which is kind of incredible. It's been a long January. Does it feel long to you? Yeah, it it does, but also like cannot believe we're one twelfth yeah. of the way through yeah. this year already. It, um, it does. It's been a long January. Uh, this is the fifth Tuesday of the year because yeah. um, there's five Tuesdays and we have 31 days in it. Um, but we are in um, the this week, past week, the third week in our series yeah. called Come Together. We're talking about fellowship. We'll get into that in just a moment. But one of the things that we have you know, talked about last week a bit, last week we talked about you know some formative group class teaching experiences, also group experiences that were faith faith uh, lifting for us. Yeah. And, and I think most of the time we would say that uh, gathering with groups or classes in the body of Christ is uplifting for us. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't – I mean – Maybe I could probably think of a time where it was not uplifting, but I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah. but I think for the most part, I could say it's gen, gen, generally uplifting. Yeah. That said, you and I, as as pastors and ministry leaders, experience groups that are in the context of the congregation we serve. Now, yeah. I'm not talking about you know pastoral associations in the denomination right. or or in you know other communities. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking right. about we go into a group or a class. Yeah. here at FPC Lakeland or your previous church in Dunedin, my previous church in Haines City, and, and there is a different experience for us and a different experience for the group when yeah. we're present. So I wonder if you talk about some of the challenges that you you particularly well, face, and I, and I could share mine as may, well. May, but. Maybe just a pre, pre-question before we get to the answer to that question. Are you – are you – do you sense that? Do you are you are, are you conscious of that when you go into these various settings? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now that might be because I was raised a PK. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I was raised a pastor's kid, uh, so I was always, I was even as a child, I could see, I could sense how the temperature of the room changed when we were present. Yeah, um, and so I always went in eyes wide open. I, I'm, I'm a preacher's kid. I married a preacher's kid. My brother-in-law is a preacher or is a pastor. My sister-in-law is a pastor. So we have that. It's like family business. So we, I think there's this sense in which we know. Now, I can say that there are other challenges when you have that kind of awareness that are that that make it different. It makes it difficult to to to, to open up in sometimes in those situations mm-hmm. because you're all because I've seen it go badly, right? I mean, I've seen it yeah. go badly. A pastor comes in to a group that he's serving in or she's serving in. Go, they go into that church. They 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 do the thing that we preached about. You know, have been preaching about is yeah. being vulnerable and open. And then somebody in that group starts to you know does something with d- that does something with that that threatens that person's livelihood yeah. and threatens their family's livelihood yeah. and and you know moves them towards a disqualification for even ministry and and what they were trying to do is share so that and so knowing that that has happened in the past there's a sense in which sometimes I go into a group and I'm like well <laughs> you know a little bit arms uh, there's a little bit more yeah. and maybe sometimes too much in those settings and it takes a yeah. while to get there but are, like I think do you, know, this, do you this, have an awareness of that? When I, you I do. I, I, I am I am aware of it, and you know, after twenty five years of doing doing this, you you learn to you know, live with that awareness, yeah. and you're I'm aware that that it, that it exists, um, and yet uh, to the, the the thought of not going to those groups uh, because because they might sense some you know. Uh, 
catalytic change in the room because you're there is just that to me is far worse than just yeah. than 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 just living with that. So I know this it's a reality of it. Uh, it may, the whole thing reminds me of a conversation. I think it was Kerry Newhoff, one of the writers for the um, for leaders of leaders in, Christ, in the Christian Church, was talking about pastors and friendships. Yeah, because you you talked a lot about that on Sunday about yeah. the, the you know, having that kind of level one, level two, level three you know, friendship and pastors and friendships and, and and why there is if there's an epidemic of quiet loneliness as I've called it with men in general to have the 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 idea of pastors being lonely it's especially is, is, true, is especially yeah. true mm-hmm. for this very reason the yeah. very thing that you're asking about and the very thing that Kerry Newhoff was was writing about and um, and he, it was he had an interesting take on it it's two things that stood out to me one of them is that is that the the reason why it's different is because there is a almost an unconscious thought but it's a, a, a reality that there is a power shift that takes mm-hmm. place. He was putting putting it in terms of power, which I I hardly ever think in those sure. terms. I rarely think of those terms. So I was just like, help me get what you're saying. He said that you, they understand that you have the ability to influence many. Yeah. And the things that they are influencing and sharing with you, that that could actually influence the larger church, but just by their – and they, and for most people, they are attracted to being around people mm-hmm. like that. So that was the first thing, that people like being around that, which is why he was explaining that – why. Maybe Many people want to be around the pastors, but the second thing is that is that from for the sake of the pastors, which he was writing to, is mm-hmm. that we we tend to find out who those who the people are who don't want to be in a relationship with you for that reason. Yeah, uh, when you. He said, "Oftentimes, it's when you've actually gone to another church, yeah, and it's who you still who still comes to you because they want you, yeah, and they want a relationship with you. So it's a really interesting, interesting dynamic. So you're, it's, it, I have all kinds of my brain's all over the the map with this this idea. So I am aware going into settings that people uh, are there because they want to be uh, around the pastor and they mm-hmm. want to be, with them, but but they should also be aware that I want to be with them, yeah." So there's a reverse to that. Is that it, it's it's right for me and it's and it's life giving for me to be uh, to be with uh, with them. Um, the question of vulnerability that just depends on the group. You know, yeah. the, a, a, the small a smaller group of men who are talking about you know any kind of issues is always going to be a more vulnerable group. Sure. And um, and, uh, and that that's a question of boundaries that every every person, not just the pastors, has to yeah. decide what they're willing to to go with. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's interesting what you were saying about the power thing because you know there's some folks that you know we we, we can't there's some people that are just like we we don't know you we you know we, we want to and we're like yeah but I can't be in those that, that that level of intimate relationship with everybody in the church right we we've yeah. got a, over a thousand people that are in and out of this church in a month and I think there's a lot of them that would would say they, they would like to be in deep and personal relationships with with yeah. us and I think I think I think I can speak for you as well say so we would like that as well but it's not able, possible to be able to know, know that but, but I it's, know everybody that way but yeah. it's just I mean how how does that happen it's just not well, we just twenty four hours in a day, and that's all and, we do. And, yeah. and and uh, and and there, and there's also too. There's also the the idea of of uh, you know that that's also just not the way Christ modeled leadership and right. and and ministry or or any of the 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 churches were modeled that way. I mean, there's always a small group of people and, and it's, and it's not, it's not a rotating group of people either. You know, it's, it's a small group of people that, that you're in relationship with. And, and then there are, there are a little bit larger groups that you're in relationship with. And then there's the large group of the church that you're in relationship with. And, and people at different levels know you differently and know, and, and there's a trust thing that goes in with any, anybody, yeah. right? I would be concerned for any pastor who, and I know we're talking about pastors and preachers uh, here, but any pastor who, uh, y- yes, you can't be friends with with a thousand people in the same in in that kind of you know weekend hours mm-hmm. with each other t- kind of way. The the other forty eight weeks, as you mm-hmm. were talking about, you can't be friends with uh, with with everybody that way. But to be friends with nobody that way creates mm-hmm. the, on the opposite extreme is an entirely different uh, topic. Yeah, uh, and that's that's something that 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 you know I, I suppose I could think of a few. Pastors who would tend towards that that direction, I would just counsel to them that, no, these are your brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ. You're going to spend a lot of time with these people while you are serving in this church. You know, we have a responsibility and a privilege to be able to to get into small groups. You can't do it with all of them, but yeah. you ought to be doing it with some of them. Have you ever dealt with a situation where you have your group you found in a, in a congregation, um, a small group that that you're in relationship with, 
it, have you ever experienced a situation where there is a sense of jealousy from other groups that you, that's not the one the pastor has 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 I've heard it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I've heard it, and and you know I I don't know what we what to do about that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to to respond to that other than say the alternative is to try to do the impossible, which is to have that with everybody. Yeah, uh, that's one extreme, or the other extreme is to not do it with anybody. Yeah, and so we, we it's going to be, it's almost a, a necessity that there's going to be the exclusion of, of others, and uh, that, that, that doesn't make me happy to say it. It's just it's just the reality of it. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I think um, I think I think one of the things that um, that that is that is that is key with that is being able to explain to people very you know sincerely what you know what your boundaries are, what your limitations are. Mm-hmm. And, and, and hopefully people having a, a, uh, a sense of maturity to be able to hear that you're, mm-hmm. you're only a human being. I'm only a human being. Every pastor we're only, and we are not the replacement for the whole body of Christ. Right. And, and the body of Christ does not end you know, in, in the places where we are not right. You know what I'm saying? We're just one piece of the puzzle and one, you know, one piece of that. puzzle. I would, I would say this though, that if, if you and I are only spending time and that, that kind of level three, uh, fellowship with a, with a small group of people and it's the same small group of people, uh, over time that has another, that's another set of problems mm-hmm. because we're not really trying to expand beyond. Sure. That. Sure. So how many, now it doesn't, doesn't mean that we're going to be doing the same kinds of things with other groups of people as we, as we expand beyond. Mm-hmm. On that, but but th- that has a that that is a problem that we only have that if we only have that group, mm-hmm. you know, we really do need to expand out and have you know seek to be in in some if 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 even a level two relationship with mm-hmm. with a larger group of people. We have level one relationship. I'm using all your terms yeah, yeah, from, yeah. from Sunday. We have a level one. We get that all the time. Yeah, and uh, that we that our level twos ought to be a much broader group, and then our level threes we should be finding different pockets of level threes throughout the church. Do you find it uh, at times a challenge? Because I've experienced this. You get into a group and you're you're wanting there to be some mutual, some mutuality there, right? Some encouragement for yourself and for yeah. others. You'd be an encouragement, some vulnerability for yourself and for others. Have you found it in the, at times where it, it defaults to you being the de facto kind of leader counselor, yes, you know, and, and, and where you're going in with the desire to have this, let's talk together, let's, let's have talk a, together. Yeah, let's have, yeah. And it, def, and it defaults to pastor John, what, just listen to me. Yeah. Pastor whatever John. you say, that's the end of the, con- <laughs> as soon as you talk, it's yeah, the end of the conversation. Yeah. Have you ever had that? Yeah. I have. And then early on in ministry, I, you know, I, I succumbed to it cause I, you know, I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, I'm, and I'm still working a lot of things out myself and, you know, and so I, I talked a lot more, but I think the old, the older I've gotten, the longer I've been, been at it, the more I realize that the people that we are in these groups with are fascinating people. They have mm-hmm. amazing backstories. They have great things to add to to everybody's life, and and we do all, we do well to do a lot of listening to uh, to to each other. So I've I've learned to sort of do a little judo move on that. Just like you take their energy and just turn it back to and turn it in a different direction, and say, yeah, that's a great question. I'd love to talk about me yeah, endlessly here, but let's talk about yeah. Us. What do you think? Yeah. What yeah, do you think? And and point people. Yeah, I, I had done the thing where I kind of uh, in in those groups. Depending, and it, again, depends on how long that group's been together and how well I know the people going into it. Just just kind of calling another person out, say, "Well, I got you know, I have some thoughts on this, but I'd really love to hear yeah. what this person over here has to say." And 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 then I'll almost like say, "Well, this is this is not just about what I." What yeah. I think. My my challenge in those moments is I, you know, you talk about you know liking to talk. I also think I know better than everybody else. <laughs> so, so I have to I have to yeah. work out my uh, my my sin of arrogance. And sometimes I'll, I'll be in those moments. And I'll be like, dang man, I'm like really being really uh, yeah. You're self aware in the moment. I'd be like, oh man, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. I'm I'm sucking up all the air in here. Uh, but it is. You know, those yeah, are there funny. are some challenges that we face when, and everybody faces challenges when they go into groups. I thought you had one one of the greatest things was you you you. Know, you you, you honored uh, Julie um, well when you talked about she's the one who can speak truth to to mm-hmm. Zach, but you also s- spoke of uh, of Brian as well yeah. who can speak truth to Zach and and I thought it just sort of I could feel the in the room that that the the message that you take away from that is that who speaks truth to me yeah. 
if I was anyone sitting in that room, you, you just, you know, who speaks truth to me? Who do I allow to speak truth to me? Even if I, as you said, you don't like it all the time, but even if you don't like that. So if you want to get into that level, you know, the, you know that that person who's speaking, the, it's straight up Ephesians 4. It yeah. is speaking the truth out of love for yeah. that person. Yeah. yeah. There's not zero intent to harm that person. Yeah. There's only good that's coming, coming to that person. I think a lot of people... Um, uh, probably long for that, yeah. Uh, and it's a good scary, number of people though. don't don't have that. Yeah. And I think, it, and then to experience that for the first time, it's not for the faint of heart because no. somebody's going to say something that is going to be, you know. I remember my friend telling me um, in, in Dunedin one time that he was challenging me on something. I, we were disagreeing on something, and he said, and but he began his comments with, "John, I love you." Yeah. But I'm not with you on this. Yeah. And it was so disarming to me. Yeah. Because I was like, ordinarily, if, if, if he would have just started with, I'm not with you on this, I was like, well, why not? You know, I would yeah. sort of dug my heels in. But he's like, no, I'm with you. I'm yeah. absolutely with you, but I'm not with you on this, this yeah. thing that we're talking about. And uh, and I, that that's really important, I think, for, yeah. for people to be able to have that. And so, and actually, this is uh, leading into, Zach, I want to talk to you on air right now <laughs> about something. <laughs> no, not at all. This is cut. It, it, that's right. Yeah, yeah, going to cut this out. Cut this part out. No, um, but you know, this, this message... I think both of us came into this message on fellowship with 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 a with a goal of ref- helping to reframe the 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 stereotypes of what fellowship tends yeah. to look like in the church. And you really, yeah. really, uh, you die. We both mentioned the the Greek term koinonia. Yeah. I I kind of did a very cursory definition of that. Mm-hmm. Um, at the beginning, you kind of went and dug deeper, and I loved how you connected that word, how it's used um, in, in with in John. John uses it, um, the, and then uh, Paul also uses it. But in the connection that we have with God first, and yeah. and uh, and then how that fellowship creates the fellowship with one another. You talked about how Paul was received by the apostles, and he was given the the hand of fellowship, which yeah. I. That was one of those when you when you when you said it in the the message, I was like, I never really thought about that image of the you know the the handshake or the you know what you know all that the nuance in there. But I wonder, you know, as you're you know thinking through both of those sides of things, you know how how you wanted to make that connection yeah. between our fellowship with God and how and our fellowship with one another. What was yeah. the mentality? Well, first of all, I was glad to see. I mean, I, I I make make notes when I'm listening to yours as well, and I'm uh, I was asking about myself early on about the vertical. Part of the, yeah. the us and God part of it, and and then sure enough, you, when you started talking about verse twenty two out of out of Hebrews, you, you talked about drawing near to God. Yeah, the identity the, piece was there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you had you had that in there. Yeah. In, but I didn't well tie it to the word, which I thought, which I really uh, liked how you did that. You tied it specifically into that Greek word koinonia, which is mm, in the Bible, yeah. kind of all over the place. But I and I really loved that, and I was like, man, I wish I had kind of gone and pulled those verses to tie it into yeah. that twenty two. But uh, but I think I I do think that for me it was like. Okay, the, these people, um, especially in Jerusalem, when they were coming together for the Acts to you know the the Pentecost mo- moment, that there's a breadth of people, people yeah. and and geography and backstories and whatnot, and uh, the, the single unifying thing is that they'd had a profound experience uh, with the Holy Spirit, and that and they had they 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 had this connection with uh, with God with the with 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 the, the vertical d- dimension, and it's out of that that the the rest of it floats. So I wanted to I, I wanted to to, to well, I saw that, and I just really wanted to to, to to expand on that, which is why you had those like First John, where you get both of them yeah. in one passage, and 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 then just to illustrate that with the fact that I really do think that the unity that that I feel with the people who are fellow believers with me is is, is not based on any backstory. My my thing with John Frost is like yeah. we're, we're we're different different people, different people here, mm-hmm. but man, do we have something common that yeah. is that is rock solid foundational? The Florida Gators. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just like you know, everybody exactly knows it. that you. No. Yeah. I, 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 you mentioned the Gators quite a bit, yeah. right? so I thought in the thing. But you know, it was funny that you said that uh, because even today. So I listened to your message this morning before coming into the to the office. We have staff meeting this morning. Mm-hmm. You, you couldn't be at staff meeting. You had a, a funeral to get uh, to or graveside to get to. But uh, Tim Timmy's our student ministry, uh, our uh, college and young adult coordinator mm-hmm. here. Um, he, he was out 
with a group um, of of young adults at Rock the Universe, and he said something related to what you're talking about. And it was we were not talking about the messages at all, mm. but one of his students. I don't think they're all students. I think they're just young adults. Young I adults. keep saying that, but um, I'm thinking youth ministry. But um, but one of the the young young men came to Tim. They're in the middle of this Rock the Universe concert series, you know, out at Universal Studios. And he said, man, I just, I love, I love being with you guys. And he goes, we would never be friends <laughs> if it wasn't yeah. for this group. Yeah. So we would never be friends. But how, it's so cool that this, this, you know, our faith has brought us together. So we would never be friends. And that's what you're talking about, this idea of this mass diversity, especially in the early church in yeah. Acts chapter 2. So one of the things we haven't talked about, but you're mentioning it here, and you mentioned it a bit in your sermon, is, you know, the, the event of Pentecost – it is bringing in folks from you know Jewish uh, worshipers from all over the Roman Empire. Yeah, and this is why you get the the the, the tongues, the flaming tongues, you know, and and everybody hears the gospel in their, own, their language. own language. And the reason that's so important is because there were so many people with differing languages in there, and there's this unity. So you do have on the one hand this 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 unifying fellowship, right? And this is one of the things I was really trying to bring out is. You know, when we come together to worship, there is a level of fellowship that we have together. Yeah. There is a level, but it is a very it, it's a thin level. It's mm-hmm. wide, but it's mm-hmm. very thin. And what we're called to is yes, that, but also yeah. dig a little deeper. And uh, and and uh, and I really like that too. I, and I didn't go there with with, with mind on that to, on that third level. Although it was implied in a lot of things that, that was said, it was that the because it's it's true that we do have this we do have a general sense of unity just by being together. Mm-hmm. But we that that's not the same thing as as actually actually being dug, dug in together, in yeah. everybody mm-hmm. each other's lives yeah. uh, the way the way that they were because you can't help but to be dug into each other's lives if you're eating together daily in the temple courts mm-hmm. or in your homes like they were in the in those in the early church you can't help but to know the details of a person's life yeah. and to care about care about their life deeply and which is what exactly what uh, in the end we're, we're calling for and what you see in biblical uh, fellowship yeah and, and i think we're both we were both saying the same thing is that We've gotten away from it. Yeah, we really have. That's why I love how you began the you began the message by just you know what let's just let's just re- symbolically show that we're just by by greeting simple one, which greeting. we haven't done in two and a half years, three years almost, almost yeah. three years. Yeah, almost three. Jeez, Louise, almost three. And it, you know that was not that was a that was you talk about game time decision. <laughs> that was an because we had you know for those backstory we actually had permission from the session to do a couple of different things again that we haven't done since COVID that was in the kind of the way back, back of my mind. Um, we're singing, I'm hearing the voices singing together and I'm thinking, man, it just would be good to have that kind of moment. And you could, I don't know if you could tell on the recording, I haven't seen on the recording, but when I started even giving that invitation, you could, there was a, an audible They're like we're ready <laughs> there was an audible like like yeah. cheer from people to be able to do that and uh but again that's even only that's only even one like half like a quarter step deeper than just coming and singing and praying together right yeah, yeah. now i almost couldn't stop them from like you know i noticed that too <laughs> <laughs> but i had time so that yeah, was good did. yeah we had time so but uh th- but it's not it, we're ha- it's almost like you know it's almost like when you when you you know they you, they use that term it's like riding a bike you know which is the idea you get back on a bike and it's just like you never left which is not really true I don't know if you've ever not ridden a bike for a long time and then tried to get back on a bike. <laughs> yeah, you can get up and get moving again, but it does not feel comfortable. Like, it, it's not easy. Like, yeah, you can do it. That's funny. <laughs> right? You can do it, but you're yeah. still... Like, when I was a kid, I could ride without my hands on the wheel. Oh, yeah, I yeah. can't do that now, no, man. No. I'm like, it's, uh, you know... I, I, I We got... Because we have pedal power, we I got a couple bikes here, and I'm thinking, is that really true? Like, because I hadn't ridden a bike in years. <laughs> And this is the same thing with fellowship. Yeah. Right? We've we've gotten out of the habit and it's it it's tricky kind of getting that back. You know? I appreciated your backstory, uh the detail on the on the, the Jewish converts to Christianity mm-hmm. that the Hebrews that they were that he was they were writing to, that they were going through some hardships. I yeah. kinda left that part out and just yeah. said it. I mean you, we both said the same thing that we we're we're not told 
you know, the, the particulars, the particulars of, this, of it, just that yeah. they, there was something that was, was going on that was mm-hmm. triggering these folks from from back backing away. I, I appreciate that. I also appreciated the um, the uh, and maybe I just made the, put this in the form of a question for you. There there was some distinction, be, be, um, some emphasis being discussed on friendship. Yeah. And the difference maybe between friendship and fellowship or the relationship between friendship and fellowship. Yeah, and you did this really well in your message. And I thought this was, I think the difference between friendship and fellowship from a Christian standpoint is that Christ identity marker, mm-hmm. right? Like, and, and this is like cutting room floor kind of really quick sort of thing. It's like... I made the the opening illustration of me and and Chip. You know what was it that made us friends? It was that we had the same we had the same birthday. We had this we had the same you know we we shared a backyard. Yeah. But for Christian fellowship, it transcends that right because it transcend you know um, you know C S Lewis has a quote in the book The Four Loves, he, and I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase it because I can't remember exactly how it goes, but he says something to the effect of friendship is one man saying to another uh, another man. Oh, you too, right? Like there's mm-hmm. this this common agreement on something, whereas Christian fellowship is not just oh, you too. We have this kind of quirky thing that binds us together, or we have a like you're talking about like you know ninety five thousand of your closest friends at the floor to get at the swamp. You know, it it's not just a a kind of a common you know, uh, uh, an agreement on something. It, it, it's, it's a person like our identity mm-hmm. is, 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 as, as brothers. The reason that you and I can say you and I are brothers is not because we live in the same, pl- you know, same area and we have the same, you know, uh, ethnic code and, and whatever. It's because of, of Jesus Christ. It's the same reason you can say to someone who is a believer in South Africa mm. or North or South Korea or, or wherever, you can say, that's my brother, that's my sister in Christ. And, and as a result, we tra- we can transcend e- e- whatever barriers. It's that, diver- you know, the diversity piece, right? It's, it's that... It's the fellowship transcends the, nor- the, 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 the homogeneous principle. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so if that's the case, and if it's true that, that we are predominantly a um, self-proclaiming Christian nation, meaning that the majority of the people would uh, – majority, not all, of course, of course not sure, all. Sure. But the, the great majority of the people in this country would say of themselves uh, uh, that still that they are Christian uh, people um, – it really puzzles me uh, because what we're describing is a way of thinking about and almost looking at another person. Absolutely. When we yeah. look at that person, we see that other person as a bearer of the image of, 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 of God, as a follower of the Messiah, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the, the, the idea of this divisiveness that it's in the news we talk about it all the time you and i talk about it all the time in our messages the idea that we are so incredibly divided and yet you've got one person who's a follower of jesus and another person who's a follower of jesus looking at each other not that way yeah they're not looking at each other that way how do we you know how do we combat that i mean that's 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 built into a message like this is that we we there's there's got to be something some way that we can get past see past these these categories that become the dividing walls between us. But well, I think what you said in your message was was spot on about the idea of you know the you know the encouragement over everything else piece. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you really talked about, you know, we 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 tend to be not that criticism is is a bad thing because there is a, an an element of friendship or a Christian fellowship that involves criticism, but it's it's right, right. That's that's implied in in, in yeah. the Julie and the Brian yeah, relationship. Uh, yeah, they're, well, it's they're, what they're 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 saying something that is yeah unpleasant. But sometimes, it's, that, it's that the Hebrews stir up that agitate yeah. thing. But it's but and I said this too. The reason that a Brian or Julie can can say that is because they also have they because in 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 far greater measure they are encouragers, right. right? And that's what you, you're really talking about. Are we more known, are you as an individual, are we more known individually with one another as a criticizer or an encourager? It's a, I think it's that, I, one of the things that's really puzzled me, and, 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 and I, I hate the default, let's blame social media thing, because I, I think that's, some of it's always been under the surface, it's just mm-hmm. some people haven't had the outlet. It's people, um, 
they don't ring out the good news very well of, mm. of, of a person they disagree with. And, and, and I think we, and I'm curious how you, you look at this, but I think we see, we don't see people, we see issues, right? We see, uh, well, you know, yeah. do you know what I'm That's saying? That's especially true when there's a, when there's a, there's a, 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 a a, a thing between the people, which yeah. is the written, you know, email or the social media post or the yeah. or the newscast on on the newspaper. There, that's a that becomes almost a third thing. So between you and me is this thing. Yeah, well, and, we, mm-hmm. and, and that that becomes the object for us to focus our attention on, and 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 we lose sight of the fact that there's a human being on the other side of that. Yeah, well, it's almost like those become the lenses that we're seeing those per, those people through, as opposed to saying, no, 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 no. And 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 often too, I think we <laughs> we give people too much credit in terms of their ability to communicate what they actually think, and I and I don't think uh, most people don't. That's a good point. Realize how harsh they come across, especially in written written yeah. co- conversations. We talk about the keyboard courage kind of thing. Yeah. Some of it I don't think is keyboard courage. I think it's keyboard stupidity. You know, it's it's or just or just un, uh, unthoughtfulness that they, they're doing a quick bursty th- that's right thing, and they they don't really reflect on what you what's being written. Yeah, I, 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 I've, hey, I've done it, so I'm, yeah. I, I know what that's like. Yeah, I've done it try, too. Try not I to do try, it. Better. I try really hard to like go back and hit delete before. I'm so glad that there's the the, the new uh, unsend function on uh, email and uh, on text. You got like like ten. You got like thirty seconds to to unsend it after yeah. you sent it. I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna unsend that real quick. Um, uh, but it, it, I, you know, I think when we look at folks that we we radically disagree with it's hard to to remember the commonality the greater commonality we we might have in jesus christ right and we that's been that that's that has been a part a historical part of our american story all all along it's been part part of our christian story all along We've, we've 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 we frequently forget it and in the world history, we frequently forget it, and we 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 dehumanize and we mm-hmm. and we villainize the um, the the those who think differently than than us, and yet we and we forget that that these people are if you, if you peel it back and you ask them questions, you know what what they believe and how they how they believe it, you know they're not that different. Well, and why too? You know, I think I think we we you know we we fail. Like I, I I'm I'm. You know, it's always interesting to me to, to to talk to someone who has a very different theological stand than I do on on various issues, and then to really get down to why they came to that. And, and the person, nobody comes to their theological convictions or their political convictions or their ideological convictions in some ivory tower. Yeah, I mean, or, or in a vacuum. Yeah. yeah, we we do so out of our our lived experience. Yeah. And when you start to kind of unpack that lived experience, and you're like, wow, wait a minute, there is. I can kind of understand yeah. where they're coming from. I don't agree with them still. Well, but that's that, the thing. It doesn't mean that we're going to agree. On that, 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 don't hear that. I mean, we, we may still land. That's not the, the goal, side. though, right? Yeah. That's not the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Unity, not uni- uniformity. Uniformity. That's right. Yeah, unity, not uniformity. Was what Josh said the first week or so. I, yeah. I still think it's a great line. And, and, it, and it's, not even the, it's not even the pattern that you see in the New Testament church, right? Uh, it would be interesting to have a whole another set of weeks that we talk about coming together in spite of these. But you look at like, look at look at what happens with with Paul and John Mark, for example, right? So in the, in the book of Acts, there is some disagreement. John yeah. Mark gets cold feet about the missionary journey, and he leaves. And then Paul and Barnabas have kind of a falling out because Barnabas wants to reinvite bring John Paul, Mark, bring Mark and, back in. And so there's a separation. I mean, there, I love that story because there is this there's this tension and, and there's this separation but then later yeah. in, in at the I, end I, at the end uh, and in one of the the letters I can't remember which letter it is but Paul actually calls John Mark back out like as a as a brother in Christ and so there's been some rec- there's been some you know reconnecting and and yeah. and they've gotten past it the same thing's true with Paul and Peter um I'm going to mention this in my sermon this Sunday but but you know Paul talks about in in the book of Galatians how he opposes Peter to his face. I mean, the the, the language is super strong there, um, and the reason is over not sharing meals with 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 Gentiles. But then later, Peter uh, uh, lauds Paul as one who writes scripture. I mean, he says mm-hmm. that, you know things that Paul writes is sometimes difficult as is you know as is all scripture. I mean, he there's this elevation 
uh, of their relationship. So they get over it, right? I mean, and it, it, the, these issues aren't deal breakers, even though they're pretty big issues. I yeah. mean, these are not small issues. They're not our issues, but they're big issues. And I think that's that's what that's what fellowship in Christ is supposed to be that transcends those issues. And, and I think what you and you and I both were were. Um, we're, we're hoping to accomplish was to be able to encourage our church to be uh, those who seek out these type these very type of relationships where you can be uh, honest enough to be able to to speak uh, differences, yeah. talk through those differences, land and uh, agree to disagree, or just uh, or, or continue to work on the work on the dialogue and just and still be connected to the others. I mean, I I, I think that's. Again, this is a, this is we've this has been a theme through others. I think people are people miss that. I think yeah. people are longing for that, and and um and whether they whether they can acknowledge it or not, I think they're they're longing for something like that. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's there is. How else do you explain the the loneliness that, yeah. that's out there? And what's the opposite? What's the remedy for that loneliness? Is to be known. Yeah. yeah. You know, to be known is to be in. Especially to be known as as believers is to acknowledge our our shared faith and to um, and to to approach each other on the basis of that shared faith and that's going to have all kinds of challenges built into it but it's going to have tremendous upside yeah. and 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 to miss out on that tremendous upside is really that in the end is I mean it is the point of talking about fellowship on a day like yeah. we did don't miss out on that tremendous upside of having these people in your life yeah absolutely it's a beautiful uh beautiful part of this message series and uh we are going to be uh kind of ex- kind of unpacking another aspect of fellowship this week with breaking bread as mm-hmm. we talked about acts 242 that they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching to the, uh, the fellowship the breaking of bread is the next part of that fellowship journey mm-hmm. um and we're celebrating holy communion so that that good, that, day, f- good day to talk about that yeah it's an excellent day we're switching places this week week uh john you're going to be in vine i'll be in, I'll be in classic this week and uh, encourage anyone if you've missed uh, any one of our messages in this series or any series head to our website fpclakeland.org to the worship page and the uh, sermon archive tab you can watch complete uh, complete sermons and complete uh, services there and if you've missed any one of our episodes of armchair Ple- preaching uh, make sure you head over to uh, google play apple podcast spotify stitcher soundcloud subscribe so you can be notified when a new episode is live and uh, feel free to share it with your your friends as well so that they can uh, be on this journey with us john as always thanks for hanging out good day and uh, we'll see everybody next time